If there is one way for women to gain their freedom, it is through financial independence. Still, in many places of the world, women still can't open a bank account or defend themselves in court. Well, now a report that looks at women's rights and economic freedom. Pascal Derry is with the Montreal Economic Institute, and welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. So I'm curious about this report. Mm -hmm. You ranked countries. Tell me about the top 25 versus the bottom 25. What are the differences that you found? Well, actually, it's a classification and a ranking we did um, based on, uh, there's one ranking based on law, like formal rights, what's entrenched in the law, and there's another ranking that we did um, in terms of culture. So there's different variables and indicators that we adjusted to be able to come to a classification and a ranking like that. So there is, in the 25 countries that are least economically free, you can see, obviously, that there's problems, women don't have access to um a decent health care, uh, decent uh, high levels of education, employment, uh, and on the, on the opposition, on the contrary, when you see the 25 countries that have a greater economic freedom, you see the difference of obviously women that have much more rights and at the end of the day, better conditions of life, better um, jobs, better obviously high level jobs, high level of education, post-secondary and, so yeah. and so forth. You know what I think I found most interesting about this study is I think we have a tendency to think women's rights are just about women and you know and it improves the lives of women but what your study shows is that the entire country benefits when women have better access to mm -hmm. independence and education and all those things. It enriches obviously the whole country. I mean, it's it's not only a matter of a, a gender parity. I mean, uh, as much as you can have men having access to employment and jobs and, and a, as much as you can give that opportunity and that same opportunity to women, at the end of the day, it makes the country richer. But if you look at the classification, what's um, what's really important, the key message in this is that in ranking in terms of the law, and ranking in terms of the culture, you can see a gap in certain countries. Yeah, for example, yes, for example, Hong Kong and Japan, where they do have a lot of sort of access, they're allowed to open their own bank accounts, mm -hmm. they can do all those things, and yet the culture prevents the women from getting the kind of independence. That exactly. Is that means, in terms of the law and what's entrenched in the law, they have a lot of rights. So the the economic freedom is pretty high. But when it comes to the culture and the social values and the practice of uh, this, those everyday rights, that's where they slip in the classification where they go down to uh, 44. Japan goes down also uh, even lower in the classification. So the, the, the bigger gap you have between those two rankings, obviously the less good conditions we're going to have at the end of the day for women. So tell us about Canada. Canada does pretty well in this. Yeah, huh? he does actually pretty well. And you can see that the gap is very narrow between the fact that uh, in terms of the law and the ranking in terms of the law and the ranking in terms of culture, you can see the gap is very narrow. And the more the gap is very narrow, obviously uh, women's have a lot more rights have a, and the well-being in general I is better. So you can see that in terms of the law, Canada is ranked third. And in terms of the culture, Canada is ranked fourth. So and I guess it wasn't all that surprising when you think, you know, the Middle Eastern and African countries did, you know, sort of lower in the rankings. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess people wouldn't be all that surprised to see that the Scandinavian countries tended to do fairly well. Exactly. Usually in those kind of rankings, that's what we see. And there's, there's some countries, like in the Middle East, that do not appear in those classifications because obviously in those countries, we are not allowed, I mean, they don't accept to do those studies. Yeah, the so information would be very hard to come by. That's well. it. But at the end of the day, it's not only, economic freedom is not low only money-wise or financially or high level of employment. At the end of the day, it really combines all the humanitarian goals and mm -hmm. I think that's what's important to, uh, to, uh, to keep in mind that at the end of the day, it's not only financially, it's basically the well-being in general for women. For the entire country. Too. Exactly. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back.